get the Catahoula Conservation Club. Anyway, we're having to scramble tonight. I uh, may need to increase Club. that. Anyway, we're having to scramble tonight. I uh, may need to increase that. Anyway, we're having to scramble tonight. I uh, may need to increase that. Anyway, we're having to scramble tonight. I uh, may need to increase that. Anyway, we're having to scramble tonight. I hear it. So this is Groundhog Day, I guess. I guess so. Uh, things are going haywire here in the technology department. I must have. There we go. That cleared it up. Really are amateur journalists, like they say. I guess so. <laughs> okay, let me try this again and see if we can get the audio fixed. Can you hear me now, clearly? Got you loud and clear. I think everything is on track. I don't know what that little hiccup was, but hey, the ghost in the machine got us, or either we were zucker bucked. I guess. <laughs> oh, I, I know technically what the issue was, so we'll try to prevent that again. I had the system audio turned up as I was trying to frantically share out the posts as my two-minute countdown was going quickly. Well, hey, it was brought to my attention that we are going to fix all things hunting, fishing, and natural resources tonight. Well, that's what I've heard. We have a special guest lined up, and... Um... Yeah, the rumor is she can fix all of this just, I think, by the end of the show. So we'll have to see. Shall we go ahead and bring her guest on? I think we need to get to it because I don't want to waste no time. I want to start fixing things. Here we go. <laughs> all right. Miss Madison, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Good evening. How are you guys doing? Well, doing fine. So I'm going to respond to a few comments here. I'll let Duke kind of set you up maybe to introduce yourself and all that. How about that, Mr. Lowry? Great. Well, folks, uh, y'all may or may not recognize our guest, but this is Madison Sheehan. Did I pronounce it correctly? Yes. Sheehan, yes. I See, people try to say my last name and they get it wrong all the time, so I'm, I'm proud. I got it right. Well, she is the new uh, Madam Secretary of the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries, uh, appointed by Governor Jeff Landry, and... Uh, um, you know, right out of the gate, I'll just, I'll just, man, you've got to be taking Louisiana in. It's like a fire hose with everything. Did, did you have any idea what you were getting into? You know, the last hundred days have been very exciting. We've uh, been in office for a hundred days now, being able to be a part of Governor Landry's administration. And as you can imagine, the governor's very fast paced and he likes to get things done. And him and I share that same personality trait. So we've had a, a great time being able to work together over the last 100 days and get into action on day one and be able to get a lot of first accomplished, be on a mission of first over the last 100 days for us. And we've been very excited about everything that, that the governor has to offer to this state, as well as the vision he's rolled out to myself and, and this department. So uh, I've got a question. How did Governor Landry meet you or, or know to appoint you because you're not from Louisiana. Is that correct? I am not from Louisiana. So I was born and raised in Northwest Ohio. I grew up on Lake Erie, uh, grew up hunting and fishing with my family. And still to this day, when I'm home in Ohio, I have the opportunity to be able to, to go hunt and fish with my, my dad and my brother who are actively out either on Lake Erie or on some of our hunting properties and be able to enjoy that. But you know, I'm making Louisiana my home now, and I'm very excited about that and being able to, to come to this state and be able to make a difference working besides the, the great people already in this department that have been here for years, as well as being able to grow with a lot of the new people that we are able to bring in. And I had the opportunity to meet Governor Landry and Miss Sharon Landry over the course of the last three years working for Governor Christy Nome up in South Dakota. Uh, Governor Nome and Governor Landry have actively worked together and various partnerships while he was the attorney general and I had the opportunity to spend time with him, meet him and work beside him. And when he asked me to come down to help out on his transition team, I was very fortunate to be able to, to make a partnership with Governor Nome and him to be able to do that. And then was asked to stay and be a part of his administration in this capacity, capacity being able to do something I love. So, oh, oh, go ahead, well, 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 I think you said something that's key that, so it wasn't preordained that you were going to be the secretary. You came down in the capacity to, 
I guess, work in the tra in the uh, transition, and then it developed into you being, you know, in contention to be the secretary? Yes, sir. That's exactly how it happened. And I came down, like I said, to help the governor get his feet on the ground. Having worked for Governor Nome over the course of the last three years, I had the opportunity to see a very successful administration that she had put together. Uh, she yeah. found a lot of success in a lot of the great policies that she's run over the last uh, five years, six years in office uh, as governor of South Dakota and had the opportunity to work for her. And I think uh, Governor Landry was looking for some folks that had had that experience to be able to help him build a team. And I was fortunate enough to be able to ask to stay down and be a part of his cabinet. So you mentioned experience, and I, I think, to be honest, that's one of the slight criticisms that um, some folks have voiced since your appointment. But it's my understanding that you have a couple of degrees. Uh, you have, a, I think, a bachelor's degree maybe in public affairs and some other stuff. So can you go over your experience, you know, and, and what you have your degrees in? Of course. I, I grew up, like I said, in Northwest Ohio. So naturally it was uh, my path to go to the Ohio State University, which I'm very proud of, and be able to study agribusiness and public affairs while I was there. Uh, as well as have minors in leadership development. And, you know, one of the things that Governor Landry expressed to me throughout the transition was that he wanted somebody who could bring unique, new, fresh ideas to the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries and really rebrand the face of the department and really highlight the work that's already being done by many of our biologists. And and really bring a new vision of leadership for this department. And so after lengthy conversations with him about my vision of leadership and my vision for this department, uh, he then made the appointment. And so my background in education wise is in agribusiness and growing up on a farm and uh, being able to do policy work as well while I was in college. Uh, spent some time in, in DC working for former Senator Rob Portman. Uh, and gaining that experience from working with him and being able to bring that back uh, to the state of Louisiana. Excellent. So what that tells me is that, you know, as we've seen in the past, running the uh, wildlife and fisheries is not, you know, necessarily you being out there writing people tickets for catching too many fish or anything. It's more trying to I don't know, lack of a better term, maybe herd cats, so to speak, and and relate to the public as well. So it sounds like you've got plenty of experience. I would argue maybe even better experience than some of your predecessors. And I know you may not want to speak negatively about them. That's, that's fine. Well, well, I'll go ahead and let me say what I think. Here's my two cents, you know, that so I, I've heard that criticism and, and I don't believe that criticism is justified because being from Louisiana all my life, I've been a, a, a lifetime license holder. I mean, I think since maybe I was in high school. I don't know. My parents got that for me. All my kids, my three kids, my wife, we all lifetime license. Anyway, all that said, Wildlife and Fisheries in Louisiana has had political appointees for Lord knows ever since I can remember. And, and I don't mean, I mean, former legislators, it's always been people who didn't know the difference between, you know, a, a toad and an egg. So for anybody to criticize Madison in, in my view, that's hypocritical. It's hypocritical at all. In fact, we've been appointing people with the, the, the same ideology for years. So to me, it is extremely refreshing to have someone from the outside come into a department that I'm just going to say it has needed reform and, and needs a fresh set of eyes. So I'm, I appreciate it. Well, and you're exactly right. And that's one of the things that Governor Landry wanted us to implement was that we were going to be a organization that served the sportsmen of the state of Louisiana, that we were going to pri prioritize the sportsmen of the state and the work that they needed to be able to serve them, to be able to give them more opportunities to, to recreate, to hunt, to fish, and be able to do things, whether it's on our, our wildlife management properties or on any of the other various properties throughout the state, whether you're a private landowner, whether you're enjoying our coast, uh, and whatever you may be able to do, be able to you know bring 
bring that to them and give those opportunities as well as be able to bring the idea of being a modern and professional organization, being able to update a lot of our IT software and our tech software and be able to, to meet people where they're at. And I always say that we have a unique job as, at this department that we are, have the opportunity to work with your kids and grandkids as well as your, your kids and your parents. And so we get to, the opportunity to meet everyone and because of that and be able to interact with everyone and because of that we have a unique opportunity within this department to really highlight the success of the work of the management that we've done over the course of the the last few years uh, for example the louisiana black bear is a 30-year project that's that's longer than i've been alive but i have the opportunity to be able to highlight that program because of the excellent work our biologists here have done and many partnerships with safari club international with uh, our wildlife uh, management folks as well as our team at the 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 bear level and so we've had a lot of great opportunity to be able to work with them and this is something that historically is never never done it's very hard to get an endangered species off of the list and we've been able to do that in louisiana multiple times including the american alligator so this isn't something new but I, i'm lucky enough to be able to highlight that and we're very grateful for all of our landowners for the work that they've put into this. So that it's just a great partnership that we're able to create. And, and you use the analogy, kind of that herding cats analogy. Well, for, for me, I was a college rower at Ohio State. I was a team captain at Ohio State. And so for us, the thing we talk about all the time is how are we gonna row in the right direction? How are we gonna row together and in the right direction? And sometimes in the boat, it's just my executive team. Sometimes it's this entire department. Sometimes it's us and all of our partnerships, our private landowners, our our outside organizations that work with us and, and have a lot of sway in this industry that we should take uh, their input as well, as well as the industry itself when we're talking about commercial fishing and some of these other things. There's a lot of great partnerships in the state. We are the sportsman paradise and it's, it's time to highlight that to the nation. Well, so <laughs> let's go down the black bear path for just a second. So I'm no expert on black bears. I just know that, you know, they've been been breeding them and whatnot over around the Tinsall region and all that for, you know, however many, 30 years or however long. So now it seems like the black bears are everywhere. They're, I mean, they're as far north and west as we are up here in Bossier, I know for sure. And I don't know how far south they've gone i've seen reports now i would argue some of that is social media and we're able to share pictures everywhere and so we think that there are more bears out there than there are but y'all did allow a limited uh lottery style hunt i think it was for 10 bears do you know anything about that or can you speak about that and do y'all have plans to increase that or do you know Yes, we're very ex excited about the bear season. So we did start with just 10 bear tags, and that's in bear area four, which is the area you guys are, are talking about right now. And I believe both of you are either from or near from those areas. And so those, uh, those areas in particular is where a lot of this management has been done. And so we have a duty to, to the landowners that have helped us, to the, the partners that we've created throughout this process, as well as our biologists to make sure that conservation stays at the forefront of this. This. And so what we wanted to do is make sure that starting with 10 tags and we look to very quickly increase that. And so uh, there's a lot of misconception of how the bear management works. And one of the things that that we as a department have a duty is to, to monitor the bears that we know are there. So male bears, especially during breeding season in the rut, will move very, very quickly, as you can imagine, very quickly throughout nature and sometimes you know they that's why we think we see way more bears than we may actually see or we are actually seeing that many bears and we need to come up with a different management practice in our other bear areas and so right now we're starting with 10 uh, a lot of that is to just start the process so there's been models done throughout the United States that haven't been successful and models that have been successful for us to be able to work off of, to be able to implement this bear season and then make it last. You know, what I what I don't want to do is implement a bear season and then it only lasts five years. We want to implement a bear season that lasts for the next hundred years. And so being able to, again, give our kids and grandkids those opportunities to be able to go out and hunt. Excellent. Well, 
Well, I mean, I'm glad we, we were talking about a positive bright spot, you know, in dealing with the bears, but Louisiana has a lot of problems. And I, I think a lot of people, you know, with, with problems with our Gulf Coast, you know, I was uh, optimistic to see that there was recently, uh, you know, I, I don't know what role wildlife and fisheries had in it, but the Menhaden industry and CCA, they all come to a, a mutual agreement um, and, or, or a compromise. Maybe that's the appropriate word to use, a compromise. And uh, maybe you could make a few comments about that in our Gulf Coast region, because we, we do have a lot of friends that are commercial fishermen down there. Um, we've had quite a few hurricanes, you know, over the past 10 years that have really set folks back a lot. And, uh, you know, then, of course, we, we definitely got to get into bass here in a minute. Rex would not it. allow you to get out of here without talking about bass. And we got to mention ducks. But how about that compromise? So that that's one of the compromises that we we walked into as an executive team, as in a new administration. And I was able to work directly with Governor Landry to uh, work with the industry as well as with CCA to come up with a a fair and equitable solution for everyone. And is it perfect? We will we'll find that out over the course of the next couple seasons um, and see where everybody sits. But it's really important for us as a new administration go, coming from the top down to be able to work with everyone who, who wants a seat at the table and be able to bring those folks to the table to start having those conversations to see what is going to be best for the industry as as well as best for our recreational fishermen. And so we were able to come up with a balance working closely with our commission uh, to come up with what that would look like. And, you know, they implemented the rules the commission did uh, after, you know, allowing them to come all, everybody to come to the table and come up with a solution. And I believe that we'll, we'll see you that pay off over the course in the next year. Uh, and hopefully we won't have to revisit the topic for a while, but if we do, uh, we'll work that out with our commission and with uh, the, the parties involved. And like I said, our, our biggest priority in this administration is make sure we grow the partnerships that have either been hurt in the past or have not been as well tended to, and we want to make sure we fix that. Well, speaking of partnerships, let's go down the road of bass fishing because, of course, full disclosure to everybody, that's my first love as far as a hobby goes is bass fishing and specifically tournament bass fishing, but just bass fishing in general. So Louisiana in historically has, uh, I'll just start at the very beginning. So I don't know if you're aware or not, but Louisiana does not keep records for fish at all, whether it's bass, brim, crappie, stripers, catfish, whatever. They actually utilize the Louisiana Outdoor Writers Association. And while they've done an okay job, I would argue that the wildlife and fisheries needs to be more hands-on in that. For instance, Texas uses their counterpart to y'all, the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Uh, they do it with no fee, and they have a real nice you know, form that you fill out on their website and explanations and all that. So have you, is that even on your radar yet? Or have you gone down that fishing path yet or, or had any experience with it yet? So we've had a lot of conversations about the fishing industry in the department, obviously, one with the commercial side of things, as well as the recreational side of things. And we've got a lot of great programs like L.A. Creel, which we use to manage most of our saltwater fisheries. That is a model that we could then implement in our freshwater fisheries, like the fisheries that you're discussing. And so what we want to do is be open to a lot of different ideas and a lot of new things that this department historically had never seen before. And so we want to make sure that we're taking really any ideas to the table and be able to look at new opportunities for us to be able to be successful as a department. And so, uh, as you know, LA Creel is one of the programs that we use to manage our saltwater fisheries. That's a set of model to the nation. And we've been able to use that to find a lot of great success because what we do is our biologists come and meet you dockside when you come back in. It's not our enforcement agents coming to, to check your limits and your fish. What they're doing is to come in and check to see how, how much you've caught so that way we can record that and then be able to grow the stock. Most of the time we've actually used those numbers to increase your limits so that way we know 
you know, what does the stock look like out in the water? And so we're able to do many different things through our sampling process, but also through that LA creel model, which then could be put into uh, a lot of our freshwater fisheries. And I'm sure you're familiar with our Get Out the Fish program, which is allows us to grow that bass population as well. And so essentially what we do there is we take advantage of our, our biologists who are some of the best in the country and do excellent work. Uh, we have four hatcheries throughout the state and uh, some of those hatcheries are specifically set aside for our, our inland hatcheries to be able to, to grow these stocks and grow these fish and release them with the hopes of using those genetics to actually grow trophy bass. Okay. Yes, so your perfect segue. So I've done a podcast before with Jeff Sibley, who is one of the wildlife biologists uh, up here in the Menden office. He's a good friend of mine and a great guy. And so anything that I'm saying or suggesting or commenting on is in no way, shape, or form against the biologists and the guys out in the field themselves. It's more on how the wildlife and fisheries has traditionally been managed, let's say. So um, the... I don't know if you're aware or not, but let me pull up the stats here real quick. So Louisiana ranks fourth only behind Texas, Florida, and Minnesota in square miles of inland water. So, uh, and this is a couple of years old, but Texas had about 5,600 square miles of inland water and Louisiana had about 4,400 square miles of inland water. In 2023, bass fishing contributed about $7.7 billion to the Texas economy, and as far as I can research, less than a billion dollars, and that's just bass fishing in Louisiana. So we, to me, it just seems like this disparity uh, there. You mentioned the, um, you know, let's go fishing program and all that. I would argue you may want to model that somewhat after California, too, oddly enough, because... While the, the goal of the program is to get people out fishing, and I know y'all do some, you know, trout releases so people can fish for the trout for a year, but what a lot of people don't realize is one of the reasons that California had so many big fish for so long is they were releasing trout into their lakes, and those bass really, really like trout, and they're full of protein <laughs> to the extent oh, that come Texas... On, right? <laughs> that we're Texas, not trout. <laughs> oh, yeah, we are. So when you're talking a, a $6 billion disparity in, in economic in, impact, and so Texas is even looking at that and some tilapia releases in their studies with their biologists. So anyway, my point of all that is, again, we may want to look at the Texas model and their share lunker program. Are you familiar with uh, or have you had time to look at the Texas program and how they do their share lunker program yet? So, so I've not looked at the Texas program yet, but one of the things that we've talked at length about within our executive team is what are other states doing that we can maximize within Louisiana? Because there's a lot of models out there, whether it's for duck management and a lot of the other states that do a lot of great work throughout the country. Like you said, duck management. You've got South Dakota who's widely known for their pheasant hunting. You've got uh, states like Florida who are, are known for obviously the Everglades and the species that come out of there. And so we have models throughout the country and even in the southeastern region to be able to really highlight the work that we do here in this department and be able to maximize it based off what other people are doing. The, the beauty of uh, coming in and looking at the department from a very fresh look allows us to look at what the states surrounding us are doing and what we can do better than them, as well as what we can continue to do to find even more success. And so, and whether that's create partnerships or even just, you know, implement a new model within this st state. And so we've been actively having conversations with our counterparts and other states to be able to talk about anything from duck hunting to to the fisheries to just our water management and some of those other things that we're working on day to day to be able to make this part uh, department better and like I said we want to make sure that we're giving our sportsmen more opportunity that we're serving them and so any capacity that we can do that is definitely something that we're going to look at doing. All right, so a couple more points, Duke, and then I'll, I'll let you turn it over to the feathered friends that we have. Um, <laughs> so I, I would strongly encourage y'all to use Texas as kind of a model and, and as much as you can, because when, when you talk about Texas and fishing and bass fishing in particular, people think 
big bass and it is a huge industry that texas has been able to do and if you ever have a chance go to their athens facility over there where you can see how they've implemented that share lunker program their agent they provide a list of certified scales and places where you can uh, go to have big fish weighed because big fish is a big big bass is a big business um, and their agents will actually drive. Now, granted, Texas is a big state. It may take them, you know, several hours to get to you, but they will actually drive if it's part of the share lunker program and meet you and help you do the genetic sampling. And you can actually trace your fish through its genetic history once they put it into the program and all these things that they're doing. So my main point is to encourage you to really, really take a hard look at the Texas model at least as far as bass fishing goes. We, we've got some good good things going on. Bussy Break and then Caney Lake down there at Jonesboro Chatham are both shining examples of what the wildlife and fisheries here can do. We just need to take it a few steps further. You're exactly right, and I really appreciate you sharing that as well. Well, so, you know, Rex, all that sounds just wonderful, but you know what? something tells me texas has a little bit of a deeper pocket than louisiana and well that might be true but look i, I, mean, I you, again you, i'll you, say if you turn it into enough of an industry then it well, becomes self-sustaining and they partner with toyota so toyota is helping underwrite a lot of that uh, i agree and i'm not saying it's impossible but i'm just saying if you rub lint with lint you still have lint at the end of it but here's the thing so Louisiana was the sportsman's paradise. You know, I appreciate you still, you know, Madam Secretary, describing us, but Louisiana has lost a lot um, in a lot of years. And, and when I say that, I, for me personally, it's about the, the, our feathered friends that migrate north to south or the lack thereof it these days in Louisiana. And uh, that's something that's passionate to me. And, you know, I understand you've been engrossing yourself um, in I, I got a report from a biologist out of Texas and they complimented you. They said, uh, yeah, we met your new secretary and said, she's tough. She's on the game. So my first, my first description of you is that you were tough. And, um, well, that actually wasn't the first, but the first from, you know, I guess one of your counterparts from in another state and, and Texas, for example, um, Rex is right. They are a little ahead of the time. Texas just took the step to uh, do away with their conservation order on, you know, Arctic geese, hunting Arctic geese, because they're seeing their populations decrease so much so. Has there been any discussion, you know, amongst wildlife and fisheries that, or, or maybe our biologists, that maybe we need to, everything we're doing in Louisiana is not working? Because I think that this past midwinter survey was the lowest uh, recorded survey in the history of Louisiana. And we're still proposing to do the same things we've been doing over and over again. So is there, is there any will to try to do anything different? Well, as you can imagine, and I'm sure both of you at this point have followed Governor Landry for quite a few years now. Uh, he is a huge duck hunter, a huge waterfall hunter. And so he has made that a cornerstone of of our office to make sure that we highlight and get to work really hard on, you know, what are we doing to bring back wildfire, uh, waterfall into the state? And so we've had a lot of conversations at length with him about, about ducks and about the different services that we can provide to the duck hunters of the state and to the waterfall hunters of the state in order for us to, to bring some of those ducks back. And so working with various partners like Delta Waterfowl as well as, as Ducks Unlimited to be able to see what we can come up with and what we've done in the past that has worked and what hasn't uh, and be able to come up with different solutions with folks at Delta and, and various other organizations to see what we can do to really find success. And so we have spent a lot of time uh, spending time out in the field. I'm sure all of you are familiar with one of our biologists, Paul Link, who's arguably one of the best uh, duck biologists in the country, uh, coming from us from North Dakota and South Dakota, actually. So uh, Paul and I share that same interest of the, the, the Dakotas. And so 
you know, we've got a lot of great work that's been done in the past, but like you said, we can't continue to do things the same we've always done. I told my executive team on day one that the worst thing you can do is come into my office and say, let's do this because this is how we've always done it. And so that's not going to work for me or Governor Landry. And so we want to make sure that whatever we're doing is, is looking at our cutting edge models that we have to offer throughout the country and see what we can implement here. And so whether that's taking uh, models, be able to grow the industry itself, bring people and attract people here uh, just for our duck seasons. Like I mentioned, South Dakota earlier, uh, South Dakota is known for its pheasant hunting. Well, that's because they've nationally marketed as a tourism opportunity to be able to come and hunt pheasants in an environment like no other. And we need to get back to a place where we can talk about the sportsman paradise. And the first thing you think of is our fishing on the, the mouth of the Mississippi River, as well as you think of our duck hunting. And so we're working with a lot of groups to be able to make sure we're maximizing that and giving our the hunters and the sportsmen of the state as many opportunities to be able to hunt waterfowl. I mean, that's some of the, the best hunting in the world uh, happened at one time in Louisiana. We need to be able to bring it back to that. Now, now you, um, I, I was pleasantly surprised to hear that you and the deputy secretary y'all traveled to uh, either Minnesota or Wisconsin to the Mississippi Flyway Council meeting. And I'm curious about the reception that you guys got there, because historically um, the the representatives from the states in the South have not had a warm treatment there. Did they treat y'all appropriately? So we were in Michigan, and, and yes, they, they treated us appropriately, but I think we kind of sent a message on day one that we weren't going to handle business the way uh, that had been historically done by the, the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. And so, as you can imagine, we've been very active, not only here in Louisiana, but at the federal level as well. Uh, we attended the Flyway Council uh, Council meetings. We attended the North American, which is the cornerstone uh, conservation event in the country. And so, you know, we want to make our presence known um, and be able to talk about the issues that we face. So we, we are the vote voice for the sportsmen of the state, and we need to make sure we're doing that on a national level as well. All right. So... Let me ask another question that is going to kind of change topics a little bit, but it's kind of related to, um, kind of related to, I guess, ducks and fishing. But anyway, so our good friend Barry Butler says, any comments on the giant Salvinia? So you may or may not be aware, but giant Salvinia is the devil weed down here. And it is a huge problem specific, if I can talk specifically on Lake Bistineau up here. Caddo Lake as well, which is a shared border lake with the state of Texas. And I'm quite sure many lakes as you go even further south. So are there any new plans or anything on giant Salvinia and how to deal with it? I'd argue we're stuck with it. So we're looking at a lot of our invasive species. So over the course of the last couple months, uh, obviously we started the spraying going into the summer season. So I'm sure you've seen a lot of our biologists and our technicians out on our WMAs, our wildlife management properties, as well as uh, around these, these lakes and rivers, be able to kind of combat that. Uh, the thing about invasive species is it's something that, you know, as it moves throughout the country, we have to do our, our best job to be able to manage them at them. And so we're working with our federal partners as well as our state partners, because like you mentioned, Cattle Lake, we need to make sure we're partnering with Texas and working with them to make sure we can come up with a solution on that area as well. And so uh, as we kind of look throughout the country to see what, what the federal uh, level agency is rolling out to us as well as what we can do in state. Uh, I, I hate to say we're stuck with it. I, I know we're working on it. We're working on a lot of different things uh, to be able to fix some of these problems, uh, such as the hog species, obviously, uh, LSU just came up with the feed uh, to be able to use uh, to get to get rid of some of the hogs in some different capacities. So, and that's a problem we historically didn't think we were going to be able to fix. That affects a lot of states, not just Louisiana, but being able to take advantage of research facilities like LSU, being able to partner with our biologists to come up with a solution 
and allows us to be successful as a state. And so as we see things like the hog feed roll out to be able to minimize that invasive species, hopefully we can come up with something uh, using a lot of the science and technology that we're on the forefront of to be able to combat some of these uh, vegetations as well. Maybe we should train the bears to eat the hogs. There you That's go. Or we just need more bears. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, Madison, th this one, you know, kind of goes into your overall experience. I mean, because I appreciate I, I, I had occasion to work uh, in southern Ohio, Carrollton County, you know, and down around Weirton, West Virginia, and Beaver Creek, Pennsylvania, all in that area as well as spent a lot of time in the Dakotas, oil field, you know, all over up there. And, mm -hmm. and I spent quite a bit of time in South Dakota as well. And, you know, in some of the different areas of the country, you know, they place more of a priority. Uh, in Louisiana, I, we all like to, we, we love our hunting and fishing. We love our outdoors. But I don't know if historically, if we've made it the priority. I think we've always taken it for granted and I think a lot of these other states, maybe in some of those regions, I'm not sure on all of their their rules and, and tax base and such, but dedicated funding. Um, you know, I, I know Governor Landry is trying to change the, the whole structure of government in Louisiana. I kind of see that coming. Is it possible that we could see, you know, our wildlife and fisheries move towards a, a dedicated funding model like some other states have had to where we could maybe kind of do a little bit more, like even as Rex describes for the bass fishing, more for the ducks? You know, is that any discussion there about trying to, you know, do something like that? We're looking at every revenue source we can, we can look at in our apartment. One of the first things we did when we took over was to conduct financial reviews. Not only did the governor send out an executive order asking us to do it, but we kind of were already in that process within our department. And I'm sure if you guys are familiar with any of the historic knowledge of our department, it was time, it was necessary to be able to conduct a financial review uh, just to make sure we saw where we were at as a department. And, you know, we work mostly off of oil and min mineral revenue as well as your carbon sequestration uh, obviously is very popular on our properties to be able to make a lot of that revenue that then in turn funds the department and so we're looking at a lot of those different models that other states are using and governor landry to find a way to implement some new ideas and new processes and new revenue streams obviously we have to have revenue to provide the services and products that, that we deliver to the sportsmen of the state but but the thing about governor landry is is that we are open for business now right like the state of louisiana historically was not open for business over the last eight years and now we are and so in my department and in the other departments throughout the state and in the governor's mansion, we're, we're back to being open for business. And, and we wanna work with the folks in this state to be able to come up with a solution to provide their services. And as the governor works on his agenda day in day out to be able to serve the people of Louisiana, uh, we're coming up with those solutions to be able to make sure this department has what it needs and be able to work with our different state partners to be able to come up with that solution. Yeah, and I would uh, say on the fishing end of it, you know, um, going back to the bass fishing, and I know there's a lot more fishing in Louisiana, you know, saltwater fishing and all that, obviously, but it's my pet project deal. Um, one of the things I would encourage you to also look at, and you may be already doing it, is the high school fishing area because that's insanely popular and even down to, you know, junior high kids. And so I would offer that, you know, if we can be of any help in that regard, uh, feel free to reach out to us because so far what I'm hearing from you in this interview is that you are well versed in most of the subjects that we're talking about already and I really appreciate that and I think Governor Landry is correct that yeah the department needs to basically do a 180 and be more focused on providing the resources to all of us out here. You're exactly right. We want to make sure that we're giving our opportunity to our sportsmen, not only at, at your level, at my level, but also, also the folks younger than me. You know, my brother has a 19-month-old daughter that is actively out in a deer stand with him, and he absolutely loves it. And I love being able to come home and, and be a part of that. And whether it's us as a family out on Lake Erie, you know, she has a fishing pole in her hand. It's And, you know, we want to make sure we're providing those opportunities 
to her as well as to my parents and to my brother. There's, you know, that's three generations sitting on a boat in Lake Erie and all of us have fishing rods in our hands, right? And, you know, we want to be able to have that opportunity to spend time with uh, uh, each other as a family and be able to bring them down to Louisiana and be able to, to do that same thing. And because of that, we have so many opportunities to be able to get more youth engagement. You mentioned uh, the fishing being very popular in schools. We have an excellent archery program in schools as well. Uh, and be able to, again, meet people where they're at and really engage in a lot of those communities. Uh, we have a lot of different family fun out, uh, outdoors camps. We've got a lot of off, uh, opportunities on our WMAs to be able to work with a biologist and be able to learn how to hunt and fish, as well as we pride ourselves on our, our VIP program, that is the, the fish program that goes out and meets people at, at county fairs or at different uh uh, organizations and events to be able to go out with them uh, and work with them right in the parishes uh, and be able to find success there. And so we're increasing those youth, youth opportunities, the opportunities I had as a kid, the opportunities that we, you know, are able to give my, my niece and be able to spend that quality time with our family. And those things are very important. You know, Governor Landry and his family gets to go out and uh, spend time at the with them out hunting and fishing as well. And they want to make sure that, that is translated to many generations of Louisianans. Yeah, so uh, we got a couple of comments here, but one of them, a uh, uh, guy that watches pretty much all our shows, he says, get into the public schools like low-income neighborhoods and encourage more kids to embrace the outdoors and fishing. So, you know, the wildlife fisheries may already have some programs to do that, but I know up here locally, a couple of organizations put stuff uh, like that on. And again, you know, we're big supporters of the high school fishing and all that. So, like I said before, any help that you can, uh, that you may need, just feel free to reach out to us. I know you're kind of limited on time here. So I do want to mention one thing. I did an interview with Gary Joyner, who is president of the Jackson Parish Watershed Commission. Pretty much they oversee Caney Lake, which is one of the darlings of the bass fishing deal in Louisiana and one of the you know diamonds in the rough down there. Um, he had some ideas in that podcast. So if you have a chance, may have somebody on your staff go back and watch that and some ways that they may need some help, more help from the wildlife and fisheries uh, to implement some programs around Caney Lake. That would be great. We'd love to do that. Well, uh, Madison, we appreciate your time, and, and I hope we didn't uh, beat you up too much. I mean, it wasn't brutal, was it? <laughs> no, it was not brutal at all, and I, I'm happy you guys allowed me to come on. And, you know, in the we're at 100 days right now. Uh, it's a big feat for Governor Landry. He's had a lot of success very quickly. Uh, I look forward to being able to part of a lot more success here uh, in the near future as well. And, you know, when we took over this department, like I said earlier, we wanted to serve the sportsmen of the state, provide them as much opportunity as we could to make sure they can get out and fish, as well as bring this department into a modern and professional era that you historically haven't seen from this department. And over the last hundred days, we've been able to host Governor Landry with all of our enforcement agents, who we actually have a new cadet class graduating uh, next week that we're very proud of that class and the work they They've done and you know excited to get them out and be able to serve the people of Louisiana and you know our people spend time every single day making sure you guys are safe whether it's a uh, in the boat or in the field and making sure you always wear your life jacket uh, as we get into that time of year as well and you know the biggest thing for us is you know like I said, get out, you want a voice in this department, buy your hunting and fishing license. Be able to, to be a part of this department because every time you buy a hunting and fishing license, one, it supports our department, but it also allows you to interact with us and the work that we do to manage those species for you all. And so we want to make sure we're doing that and providing those services. And, you know, as we've gotten out and about to all of our offices throughout the state, met with all of our enforcement agents, as well as most of our biologists and, and the different folks at all of our prop properties, you know, we are working on kind of that culture shift for all of you to be able to, to move this department forward in the direction that the state and the people uh, and the sportsmen of the state deserve. Excellent. Well, Mr. Lowry, do you have any parting well, well, comments I, for our gracious well, guest? 
one last comment. I just wanted to say thank you for coming on. I, you know, I have been following you. I, I see pictures of you everywhere, but you know, I, and you may have done some other interviews, but I haven't actually heard you speak. And, uh, you, uh, this was, I think people needed to hear you speak and hear you talk about the issues. And I think that, uh, for anybody that may be on the fence or have a doubt or whether or not things are going to be going in the right direction, I think that's put to bed tonight on this show, <laughs> at least for me anyway, any, I didn't have any doubts. I was excited where we were going, but I, I just, I wanted to hear, hear you speak on some of it. And I got to tell you, I'm top shelf right here. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And we look forward to serving the people of this state. We've got a lot of work to do and we're just getting started. You are Good welcome deal. back on the show anytime or anybody from the department. If y'all have some news you want to get out or anything like that. And uh, I'm sure we will be sending your office all the suggestions we can. We'll take them. <laughs> Just send them our way. I really appreciate it. Okay. Well, I'm going to switch screens. We appreciate you coming on and uh, you having your staff coordinate with us to make this happen. And like I said, if you need anything, just reach out to us. Thank you guys. Look right. forward Thank to working you. with you in the future. Good deal. Yeah. I think that, uh, went actually really well. I think it did too. I mean, she is, uh, well-versed on all of the, uh, issues. Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, nobody knows everything. I mean, and can you imagine someone that has not been engrossed in a Louisiana lifestyle and coming into having to manage, um, a wildlife and fisheries department with both coastal issues, you know, inland issues and, and all the game. And, and I mean, just, it, it would be overwhelming, but I mean, um, she's, she she's well prepared to to deal with it well i, mean, I, I gotta I, say that's my takeaway i i was very impressed and you know there are news articles out there with her age i believe she's 26 or 27 and for a 26 or 27 year old who has seemed to me to already have a pretty good handle on all the topics at hand and it's obvious that she does hunt and fish and so that's definitely a plus uh, I got to say, I was very pleasantly surprised at how well she handled the questions that we threw at her. Yeah, she she has been doing her homework, and uh, I, I got to tell you, I'm excited about what is to come uh, with wildlife and fisheries. I I don't I don't think we have uh, scratched the surface of improvement and and uh, you know the wildlife and fisheries that we've always wanted and what we expect. I don't think we've even seen that yet. I think there's more to come. Oh, well, yeah, I have a, a little bit of hope now after this interview. So um, let me also say this. So I'm going to post some of the information. I, I had a bunch of information that I you saw it in the notes that I put together in the notes. I'll be sharing some of that out for everybody as well in the comparison between Texas and Louisiana. And again, it's no slam on Madison or anything because she is uh, – brand new at this and it's no slam on most of the guys in the field it's more a slam on the bureaucracy that hey even though texas has a much larger economy as far as you know as far as i'm concerned as far as fisheries as far as duck hunting as far as saltwater fishing we should be on par um relative to the size of the state of texas there's no reason that we can't be and i think with some much needed change in the wildlife and fisheries that she seems to be bringing and governor Landry through his appointments. Um, yeah, I could, I could get behind the, get behind the change. Yeah. It, she, she is a uh, well, well on track. I mean, obviously she isn't going to tell us all of the details on the inside, but I, I think some movement is afoot and, uh, you know, we've got a lot of problems. There is no excuse for Louisiana not being the sportsman's paradise and not being at the top of the food chain. And, you know, to the, the folks watching, I mean, this was a first interview. This was uh, hopefully we'll have this interview again in the future and there will be uh, some more positive reports. I mean, the black bear thing that's been coming a long time. That's a good positive thing. I want to see that that dollar figure on the on the bass. I, I want to see that change. You know, yeah. 
I want to see waterfowl. I mean, we, we have been getting our butts kicked on waterfowl and I have my opinion on the causes. I have my opinion on why things have went so far sideways. And, uh, I have my ideas as to what it's going to take to fix it. Um, you know, I'm skeptical of whether or not we're going to get there on, on changing some of those things. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Um, but the the no matter what we have to change we have to change yeah and, and I, I don't expect any of this to change overnight i mean it's been decades in the making of exactly where we are now and so you know i don't expect her to come back on the show in six months and everybody's a happy camper type thing but as long as we see some movement in that direction because look let's face it dude and i don't want to beat a dead horse too much but it's big business duck hunting is big business Big industry for the state should be. Bass fishing should be. Hunting is, but, you know, as far as deer hunting and all that, but honestly, deer hunting is in the in a decline. Um, and then, you know, saltwater fishing, those are the three really big outdoor industries as far as I can tell uh, in pretty much any state, and we need to be stepping up the game. Without a doubt. And I think, you know, we can help to do that as in future shows. We, you know, you're already doing it on the bass uh, fishing and, and focusing and highlighting on that. I think that uh, on the ducks, I, th I think we need to start having some more comprehensive uh, shows on waterfowl hunting. And, and I egregiously did not mention the, the fine uh, shooting range that uh, Bodcall Wildlife Management Area has. You yeah. know, that's... Yeah a wildlife and fisheries uh, program out there and they do a wonderful job. It's a diamond in the rough out there. And well, yeah, I've got plenty of video. I Maybe we'll do a show on that one time. What we should do is go up there and, and go shoot and shoot some video, do some, take some video while we're shooting and all that. My kids grew up in their teenage years shooting up at Bog Call in the uh, YHEC pro, the NRA's YHEC program. So yeah, we should go up there and that, that would be an interesting idea. Well, Mike Dooley in the in the comments. I mean, I think Mike is the I think he is the range master up there, and uh, boy, he uh, he can drive pennies with a rifle from a long way away up there, he, and he can tell you how to do it too. He is, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, I hadn't squeezed the trigger on my rifles in well longer than I care to admit. Let's just put it that way. So we need to make that happen, Mister Lowry. All right, sounds Any, like a plan. Anything else we want to discuss tonight? I think that's about it. I, I just want to thank the uh, Madam Secretary for uh, coming on the show again. A great interview. I'm glad to make that acquaintance, and uh, I'm I am excited about her. I'm I was excited before I even met her, and I'm even more excited now after I get to talk to her. Yeah, it. Uh, I had only you know read a few articles about her, seen a few pictures, you know, of her. Like I said, getting her hands kind of dirty out out in the field uh, with different things with the wildlife and fisheries agents, and uh, I was kind of just wondering how a uh, young lady would uh, do under questions, and she handled it all really well. So I'm excited too. Well. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and uh, that's it for this week. Uh, you can catch us Monday or Tuesday night on Bozier Watch. You know, Bozier Parish is always forthcoming with good political goobity gook. Oh, yes. that uh, The train wreck is always fun to watch, and usually on Thursday nights, we do Louisiana Watch. Tonight, we kind of skipped that and threw in the outdoor news because we had... Uh, Miss Madison coming on as a guest on the show. And so we wanted to do that under the outdoor news banner. So anyway, typically Monday nights, we're trying to do outdoor news. Tuesday night, of course, is Bozier Watch, like you said. And then Thursday nights is Louisiana Watch. And all that's so we appreciate everybody watching. And uh, I don't know, I guess I'll go ahead and hit the finish button until till Tuesday Good night. night. Good night.